Hello, folks, and welcome to Spoiler in Time. If you're a fan of Cord Killers and you've stumbled upon this, uh, know that Cord Killers is the show that talks about the devices, the streaming services, the way you get your content, what content is coming and when. And this is the show after all of that, after you've watched the shows and you want to talk about them. That's what me, Tom Merritt, and my friend Brian Brush would do every week. Well, hello, beautiful people. It's exciting. This is the best part. This is this is eating dessert. Uh, only first. Only well, I guess immediately after a meal, which is when you always eat dessert. But uh, yeah, I'll it's tell like you that. Uh, you exactly. know what I want to talk about are the just desserts for whoever's gonna win the movie draft. <laughs> Well, it's over. What, what do you mean is over? Uh, Moana is still behind Fantastic Beasts, so congratulations wait, wait, to wait. Justin Robert Young. No, I don't know. Wait, wait. <laughs> like, what? Uh, we, we didn't get anything. Kidnap was my movie. It wasn't going to make a lot of money, but it didn't come out this weekend. So really nothing much changed, did it? No, it all comes down to Star Wars Rogue One. That's the question is whether or not it's going to be. Uh, what, what are expectations? I want to say like uh, how much? 400 million or so? I don't know. You know, I don't really pay attention. Yeah, you liar. You liar. I know you've looked right at it. What's it projected at? Uh, I really actually don't know what the domestic gross projection is, right, but I yeah. think it's around 400. I'm going to go to SH HSX and type in Rogue One here. I, uh, I should point out that this week is our last week in a pre-Rogue One world. <laughs> uh, we, will get, we will get La La Land for Justin Robert Young, which will extend his lead. He will finish this, ne this coming week in, in number one, uh, no doubt. Uh, he will probably stay number one for a couple more weeks, no matter what Rogue One does, because Rogue One's not going to make three hundred million dollars. La La Land's going to make some money and push him up above three hundred. Yeah. Then Office Christmas Party is probably going to throw some change in Milango's bank account, uh, and and that might boost him up into third place potentially. Yeah. Uh, so so that's about all the movement we're going to expect this week, I think. Two weeks and two days till my first uh, heavy hitter hits with Sing. And Sing comes from the same studio that did Secret Life of Pets and the Despicable Me movie uh, uh, or the Minions movie, I think. I forget which ones they did. But uh, all I know is as, as terrible as a movie Secret Life of Pets was, it made all the money on the planet. And if a kid is not going to Rogue One, he's he or she is definitely going to Sing. Yeah. Uh, the, and they're pouring a, a ton of marketing in, into it. So it's it's going to get there. I should also point out Milango has Moana, which will continue to make some money. Uh, and Christy Cates will still get some money from Fantastic Beasts, so she'll probably hold on to second place But as you well. know, uh, But I, I, don't, I don't think it's unkind to point out that, uh, you know, Christy and Milango, the rest of their slate, they, they, they don't have they don't have the, the fuel in the tanks. Their slate is almost wrapped. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So even if they scoop forward, they're going to fall behind. It's, it's really a two-person race. But speaking of Moana, uh, we are going to finish this episode, by the way, not with Justified like we normally do. We're going to finish this episode with Westworld. We will, before Westworld, do episode eight of season four of Justified. Uh, but before we get to that, let's let's talk about Moana because you got to see it this weekend. I love this movie. I, I mean, uh, you loved uh, it more than Zootopia, you said. Yeah, I, I oh, and keep in mind, I saw it through daughter vision, right? Sitting there with my kids, with my daughters and seeing it and Watching them, Zootopia was was fantastic. It tackled, uh, you know, the classism and, and racism in, in the big city in, in really clever ways. And the protagonist happened to be a female, but it really wasn't about her being a female. This very much was about uh, uh, being a girl because they took so many of the Disney tropes like uh, Disney earned their reputation for being stuck in this rut of the princess. Like, like I remember uh, what? I forget when, but one movie came out in the last few years and it was like, uh, you're like, good God, can you just have one movie where the story isn't saved by, by the princess marrying someone to take her away or whatever. And uh, Moana was such a breath of fresh air in that. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, that Maui is, you know, calling her princess. She's like, not princess. Like you gotta, you gotta keep, you know, animal sidekick and your dad is the king, you're a princess. And, uh, I, lo I loved it. I loved it from beginning to end. It, it was delightful. I love the fact that it was fertile territory. The idea of, 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 you know, I, I, I guess Polynesian mythologies, something that I knew nothing about. 
in no way hampered me. Didn't didn't matter that I didn't know a damn thing about any of it. I fell in love with it. The animation was was lovely. The character design was lovely. Uh, you know, the grandma has very much this you know late fifties, early sixties body, uh, and yet you know just moves with this confidence and fluidity that just made you fall in love with her instantly. Uh, it was it was an utter and complete delight. Uh, the best set piece in the whole thing was when it suddenly turns into a a, a very good copy of, of Mad Max Fury Road. When when that, that giant <laughs> Which boat, was intentional apparently. Like that was an homage. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. I loved it. And it's and it's like it didn't matter that they were coconuts. It's like it felt brutal and driving and intense. Uh, I loved it, man. And and it should be pointed out that Mad Max Fury Road very much it was meant to be a naval battle like they designed those set pieces to be as if they were ships uh you know attacking at uh, at sea and so now all it did is it just went full circle like it hey was... guess what these are actually ships at sea correct so that makes in, that in an homage to the thing that was an homage to what this actually is yeah yeah uh i agree i i thought the story was almost bulletproof uh and lin-manuel miranda whom you introduced me to all oh, that's a, right. A long time ago, yeah. uh, when you, when you discovered Hamilton, uh, when when you discovered Hamilton, I mean, oh, uh, among our friends, uh, you by, were the. F- by, by the way, you saw the news that Lin Manuel uh, he's going to uh, do the King Killer Chronicles. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's so amazing. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Side note: uh, Hooray, Pat Rothfuss! Congratulations. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah. No, these songs were great, and they fit, and the story was just. Just Disney enough to feel good, but also self-aware enough. Your princess point being one of the many times that they pointed at themselves and said, yeah, okay, we know. Uh, and I think my favorite part was that it wasn't it wasn't trying to be a movie about women. Uh, it was trying to be a movie about growing up as a girl. Yeah. And, and it wasn't trying to make a point above and beyond that. And I, and I haven't grown up as a girl, but my wife did. And she thought it did a very good job at that. And it sounds like your girls who are currently growing up as girls also thought it did a really good job of that. Uh, and, and it was just a, a tight story that never, never annoyed, never preached. Uh, it was just fun to watch, but wasn't overly sappy. And I think my favorite part is that really in any coming of age story, whatever gender you are, it's all about gaining the confidence to move out on your own. That's what you're doing when you're growing up. And the best part for me was that Maui was not necessary. She could have done this entire thing on her own had she had the confidence. Correct. She only needed to search for Maui to find out that she was able to do it. Yeah, uh, I did like, and again, this is one of those conventions turned on its ear, that the animal sidekick was utter and complete garbage. Just just <laughs> yes. dead weight. Just uh, just like as soon as they could, they threw that chicken in a bucket and they're like, yeah, he's fine. Who cares? Yeah, don't worry about it. He'll be fine. Uh, uh, and if he proves to be useful for any reason, he will not be through any action of his own. Yeah. It will be yeah. entirely coincidental. Uh, no, it was, it was utterly delightful. And it didn't even feel like a cop out that the big bad was actually the thing they were trying to save. You know, all of that felt right. And, um, you know, of course, it was gorgeous and uh, I, 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 nothing felt forced. It was really, really good. All right, uh, let's move on to Justified, episode eight, season four. Uh, we're moving into the latter half of season four, and I'm just going to go right to the big spoiler. I mean, part it's pretty much the whole episode. episode, right? Yeah, I mean, it's the point of the whole episode for sure. And I, I was punched in the gut. Surprised, I was surprised how much I was punched in the gut by the way they reveal that Arlo was dead. Yeah. Well, they. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, okay. So. Um, this is that there are two moments Arlo dies, but also just as significantly as he's laying there dying. Uh, Raylan says, this is your chance for your grandchildren to remember you as something other than a piece of garbage, because what you say now will determine your le- legacy. And knowing that full well, knowing that Raylan's going to back up that threat, that is not idle. And and the promise isn't idle. He, you know, I, I believe that he would say, well, you know, Arlo was a handful, but he came around, he did the right thing. He says, kiss my ass. And it's just like, and then, you know, to have that, you, you, you know, he kind of rolls it off in his Raylan way. But that reveal that you're talking about, like, you think that there's time for him to come around. You think there's right. time. And, of course, this is the tragedy of the human condition is that we always think that there's more time to make things right, to, to, to eventually get around to whatever it is. And instead, the next time we see him is doing paperwork and just casually shrugs and is like, oh, yeah, no, uh, call came in. Uh, Arlo is dead. 
And Kirk uh, called him in a couple hours ago. Yeah. Right? Like, oh yeah, no, he's he's gone. You know, you're going, and then art does the right thing. So you're going home. You know, you're not dealing with this in your head. And I, as a viewer, really can't tell how much is Raylan denial because Raylan does deny his feelings quite often, and how much is Raylan not legitimately caring because of just the how jaded and and rough Arlo was right up to the end. Well, they they gave. I thought at the end, a, a fairly significant kind of downbeat. Was it when he had to go identify the body or whatever? Like, yeah, I yeah. felt like they indicated, like, there were some feels happening there. But ultimately, I think the reason he wants to work is not that he's too big to deal with this, you know, or that, that he doesn't care. I think I think it's exactly as he laid it out. It's like, look, man, uh, there's nobody better qualified than me to get this guy. Uh, because like he's, when he turned to art and said, these viewers, and he pointed to the camera and said, they want to know who Drew Thompson is and only me, the main character Raylan can do it. And I was like, yeah, that's how I feel. Yeah. I, I have to say though, there, there is something that happens, uh, when, when my dad died, I wanted to keep working, right? Like I took the requisite time to go home for the funeral and mourn and be with my family. And then I was like, I'm just going to get back and I'm going to work through it. And by the way, my dad and I had a much better relationship than Raylan and Arlo. I'm not trying. <laughs> His last to words were kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah, exactly, absolutely not. Uh, but I thought, I thought I had dealt with it and it was, I don't know, almost a year, like 10 months later. I just like, I finally was like, you know what? I need a break. I need to I, I just let all this stuff pile up on me and it's stressing me out. Yeah. Uh, and I had to take like a two week break. And and thankfully, I had a boss at the under at the time who's like, yeah, I kind of knew this was coming. You didn't take enough of a break. And, and this is now just finally hitting you. And so I saw the scene through those eyes myself of like, OK, how much of this is, is exactly what he says it is. And I believe a lot of it is. And how much of it is it that instinct of, you know what, I can avoid dealing with it if I just work through it. Yeah. Well, and certainly in times of crisis, it's like uh, it helps so much to have structure and direction and to be needed. Like uh, uh, my my brother uh, had uh, had a seizure condition growing up and there was this day where just he had like 20 seizures in a day. And, and it, I did fine uh, as long as there was a job to do. But then at some point, everybody packed up and left and I was alone in the house and I just cratered because all of a sudden there was nobody I had to be strong for, you know, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I could totally see that kind of thing happening. And I, I don't think it's necessarily a, all, an all bad thing uh, to do that. I mean, it, it could be taken to an extreme, obviously, but I, I'm, I'm not sure Raylan isn't wrong, isn't right that 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 should be what he does right now. Yeah. Um, that that aside, there are some other interesting elements of this, like like the fake cop that Raylan just hauls off and shoots and that was an amazing moment that was an amazing moment like i hope i got that right (laughs) yeah well and plus also it's like he just has like he had a pretty good clue when 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 a guy wearing a cop uniform or not says do this or i will shoot you that's that's not a cop talking you know that's that's not cop talk uh although i loved how menacing and dark the whole idea is like the door opens and he just snaps a photo and then uh and then waits and then it was uh, almost black mirror yeah 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 it, it did feel that way uh, but uh, anyway, uh, it was it was a solid episode. I continue to, uh, uh, I'm I'm just befuddled by this whole um, uh, uh, what's the name Drew Thompson. Uh, no, well, oh. the Drew Thompson thing. At this point, I'm like, look, I guess it's a MacGuffin. And we killed end, a bunch of Drew Thompsons. Oh wait, none of them were Drew Thompson. Right, still, uh, like that's fine. They they've got enough credit that they could take their time getting to the point because it sounds like it's, there's a decent payoff from what people say. But um, uh, why am I blanking on Walton Goggins' character's name? Oh, uh, Boyd. Boyd Crowder. Uh, yeah, this whole Boyd uh, versus the upper crust uh, criminal clientele. I don't get that at all. I, I I'm not. I don't. I don't believe it. I don't really feel like he's been slighted. I don't understand why it's so important for him to win. I. That just seems like he needs something to do this season to stay relevant to the series, and so they just threw this together. Yeah, there, there is, there is something that that feels a bit forced about why he would go to them. I know he's looking for Drew Thompson, but it it feels like an arranged marriage. I, the the animosity, I, I find perfectly believable. 
Uh, there, there is a natural animosity that I could see among the coal, amongst the coal mining set uh, to to those folks, right? The folks up on the hill. Sure, uh, I, I totally get that. Uh, but yeah, there, I can't quite put my finger on why it exactly bugs me. But it doesn't bug me enough to really matter. But I just kind of want to get over it. Like when they were at the house with the key party and all that stuff, I was like, oh, okay, I guess, I guess we have to go through this dance. Uh, and I kind of feel like. It's over now. And Boyd got the upper hand and got to rub it in their face. I don't feel like there's enough with that class to bring them back against him. Be and, and I say that because we've got the Detroit Mafia, right? We've we've got Wynn Duffy. Uh, he's the real threat to Boyd there. And we see that. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I guess that's I, I mean, again, like like we were saying, this whole episode is was and will always be just Arlo dies. That's that's yeah. the beginning and the end. No, and I was I was shocked. I was I was not expecting him to actually die. Uh, I think it was it was good uh, for them to do that. Like they they showed that there are stakes to to this whole thing. And I certainly wasn't expecting not to see Raylan receive that news. So that that I, I, both of those things were very good for the story. Yeah. Um, all right, let's talk about a lighter uh, thing. Westworld, the se the season finale, uh, was yesterday, and uh, I, we've we got an email we might want to read, but I, I feel like maybe we want to start talking about the show first. Yeah, I think you should go first. Man, this I want actually want to talk a little bit. I know this is a bit meta, but like this feel it feels like it's been harder than most series for you to talk about this. And it's not because you don't like it. I don't. I'm. I am very challenged by the nature of the storytelling in the show. It felt like they finally showed the pilot, uh, and and I don't want to fall into the trap. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Justin is frothing out the mouth, livid. Justin Robert Young, he he is done and angry that he invested in the show and that it ended the way it did. Um, there are problems, and we will unpack some of the problems with, with this episode. However, if this was the first episode of the series, it would instantly be my favorite series, full stop, right? Yeah, and, and that, that plays into my my belief that they intentionally told this story backwards, that they said, what we want to tell is a story about an emergence of consciousness, but we don't want to make it easy. We don't want to make it that, Oh, look, they're conscious, but nobody will admit it. That's too simplistic. Uh, so they kept it where mm, maybe not all of the hosts are conscious and maybe some of them get to achieve consciousness. And I think that's way more interesting that they're discussing what is essentially an AI on the verge. Like it can pass the Turing test, but is it actually sentient? And even now we're still not certain. Is I, I know Ford made a big push to say, this is going to be your choice, but we've seen where Maeve thought it was her choice before, and it turned out she had been programmed to leave because it was another way of getting data out of the company. But all in all, I find this to be, it, it feels to me like what they said was the fun of Westworld was the, the androids turn against the humans. But if you just do that, it's cheap. Uh, and it's been done a million times before, including in the original Westworld movie. Let's explore the motivations that would cause them to do it while at the same time trying to grapple with are they actually people do they deserve the rights of people and you know once they've been pushed too far what will they do and i feel like that's what they've set up season two for is to say okay now that they have the power they have the legacy of ford and arnold what will they do with that power are they automatons? Are they still being programmed and controlled somehow? Or are they uh, are they able to take the fate into their own hands? And will they end up just becoming killing machines because that's all they know? Or will they rise above it? And I think those are interesting questions to deal with. Now, keep in mind, it's not impossible for the second season to be profoundly different from the first season and light years better. We've already seen that uh, when we when we. Uh, uh, was, was it the the leftovers? Wait. Uh, yes, the leftovers. leftovers definitely better yeah. in season two, and then we saw the opposite with True Detective. I guess. Yes. I uh, yeah. Exactly. Although, although True Detective, I I still uh, take pity on. Uh, it, it flew too close to the sun. They they just tried to have four 
interesting characters and they should only have two. Um, but, but like I am hopeful for the second season. And uh, if, I, if I want to be charitable, there was a brief 20 minutes in the middle of it that I was just giddy. The escape where Maeve gets her team together and they're killing people. I'm like, look at this actual stakes. It matters if these robots get killed because they're not going to get wiped and put back into rotation. They're going to be dead forever. They're going to go into cold storage. So I felt something when they, when that one chick got her arm pinned in there, I felt something as, as there was assassinations and stuff. I felt something with the confusion of, 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 you know, encountering Shogun world or whatever. Um, uh, Samurai world. Uh, I was thinking Shogun world too. And then someone said Samurai world this morning. And I was like, Oh, right. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and so, and so I, 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 it felt so great, which is why I got so angry when it undid that with, because she glances over and sees a daughter. It's, it's uh, like, she gets on the train and then, and then like she did it, she won. And as a viewer, I'm like, we get to see the outside world. It's going to turn into Blade Runner. This is going to be freaking epic. And instead it's like, nah, I saw a kid. Uh, I guess I'm going to go get a kid. Okay. But, and, and this may not change your mind at all. I actually don't expect it to. And and when I first saw her get off, I was like, oh, so she does care about the kid. I thought about it later. I think she gets off because she starts to fight her programming. She yeah. starts to realize that, that, that the code is making her leave. And she, d she makes a choice of her own to stay and it's not necessarily because of the kid. It's the kid that makes her think about that whole thing. That's dumb. I mean, I mean, I mean, why is that dumb? Well, no, no. If that is their intent, it's dumb because because it it boils down to uh, I, I don't I felt nothing but happiness of this character achieving her goal. And then it's like, oh, but, you know, we poisoned the goal by saying it's in her programming. So you see, she's actually doing a great thing by going back and not advancing the story. And I'm like, no, that's a cop out. I don't feel so it. you're mad that's that it didn't advance the story. Yes. It, it, or, yeah. or advance the world or advance anything. I, I feel like that advances the story because it's it's different than Dolores. So so to bear with me for a second. Sure. For, I'm coming at it from the perspective of this is a story about sentience and the achievement of sentience and whether what makes us human and what makes something human like. And Dolores is Ford's arranged way of doing that. He's like, I've pushed you into sentience. I've pushed you into a, allowing you to the choice. You can pick up the gun or not. You can carry out this new narrative or not. I'm not going to make you do it the way Arnold did. That was the mistake. I'm going to let you become sentient. But it still feels arranged. It still feels choreographed. And it doesn't feel like a fair test. Maeve, to me, is a pure test of she is programmed to leave to carry that data outside. It's been pointed out to her and she denies it because it doesn't look like anything to me. And then she has a, a break on the train. And yeah, maybe it is weird that it's because she sees the kid. Uh, but to me, that advances the story more because this is the first host to make a choice of her own on her own with no one else trying to push her in that direction. Uh, okay. Well, I mean, here's the real problem is that, uh, is that the show has indicated that it's not above. Uh, I, I, mm. <sighs> Did you feel anything at all when the dual timelines was revealed? I didn't. And honestly, I feel like that's because we've done so much, speculating online, not even necessarily on spoiler in time, but just in general that it became obvious. And, and it, when they revealed that Ed Harris was Billy, I, you know, I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Like we expected, uh, even more so than Arnold. Ar when we found out that Bernard was a was an android and a version of Arnold, I felt a little bit more surprised. This one has been coming like a train in the distance for so long. And I don't know if I would have felt that way if I'd binged it, right? If I, if I had not given myself all of this time to think. But with all this time to think and all this ruminating that we've, we've all been able to do, it, it didn't make me feel much at all. Sure. 
and uh, it made me feel nothing but confusion. I guess I guess William goes crazy, goes on a rampage. That was accelerated, wasn't it? Well, I and, mean, and, I, I'll buy that storyline if you if you lay it out. But but they sort of just fast forwarded through it and well, said, oh, OK. And so this guy that we, we led you to believe really cared about Dolores, uh, he gets mad when he comes back and realizes that she's on a loop uh, and then becomes the man in black. So. Right. There you but, go. But 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 also like he goes on a killing rampage and then the whole time taking his actual human brother-in-law strips him naked, beats him up, abuses him, like, like commits assault and then and then what he's like we made it to the edge of the park. You know what that's time for? I'm going to slap this horse's butt and you'll have to ride naked for about 100 yards. Won't that be an inconvenience that, to I will you? I'll buy that he goes on the killing rampage. I'll buy that he gets so mad at Logan that he does those things because he's just been so repressed and Logan's been so awful to him. I have a hard time buying that they'll let him marry the the sister and take over the company yes, after yes. he either beat up and humiliated at best or at worst killed Logan. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It made no sense at all. And, but and what but we're if it's a sign of him becoming more ruthless in business, oh, which he inferred. Sure, sure. And I'm certainly sure, I, I, it does. It works on that level. Yeah. But, but I, I just got to wave my hand at the whole acquisition side of it because I'm like, how, how does that work again? Like, Maybe I guess he could cover it up. Yeah, right. And be like, "Oh, I, Logan died in the park. I'm so sorry. It's you know, this park is is this is why we should buy the park. But whatever it is, I I, I want to know that, and maybe we'll get that later. I don't know. And while we're talking about stuff that makes no sense, I always assumed from the moment it was revealed that Bernard was essentially Arnold in a more uh, malleable form. Uh, I always assumed that it was a different body because everybody knew who Ford's business partner Arnold was. It, this episode intimated that it was an exact physical copy of Arnold and nobody well, no, notices. They, they did that before when they showed the picture. They I, they, I, they they showed the, the same person. To, and it, to, to be I, honest, I thought because there were three people, I thought like, oh, there they are with the Bernard model. Uh, and, and that's, that's Ford and that's that, oh, that no, other no. white guy yeah. is Arnold. Uh, and that's well, the only way it would like, make any sense. It sounds like Arnold left be right before the park opened. Or died right before the park opened. Okay, that's fine. But like, if if so. if uh, if everybody knew that Walt Disney had a partner, mm -hmm. I wouldn't make a robot that looks exactly like Walt Disney's partner who just okay, died. Okay, well, what does Walt Disney's brother look like? Uh, I I I, I, I don't know. He he didn't he didn't he at least Walt Disney didn't walk around the park saying, "Hey, you guys enjoying this? You know, I had a partner. His name was Arnold. I'm going to tell everyone who will listen all the time about my partner Arnold. Yeah, he happened right. to look a lot like Bernard." I'm just saying. Roy Disney. People know about Roy Disney. I can't tell you what he looked like. Okay, but my guess is the people who worked at the park under Roy Disney probably could get an idea of what he looked like. Again, it's it's definitely a stretch. It's I'll I'll dumb. I'll be I'll swallow that one easier than Logan, but I still need to be told why is it that no one recognizes him as Arnold? Because here's the thing. It's it's very easy to say, "Oh, well there weren't that many people working back then and they're all gone now." Uh that that's believable, but you don't have, I mean, there is a picture of him on Ford's desk. That's the part. That's the part where it finally breaks down for me. Like you don't have pictures of the early days of the park and you don't look at Bernard and think, huh? Well, that's weird. Like, even if it was just freaking Arnold never wore glasses and Bernard did, right? If it's a Clark Kent disguise, it would be better than what they did. Uh, agreed. Uh, there was another. There was another moment that was just bizarre. Oh yeah, what's up? Uh, what's up with that whole plot that went nowhere about like, uh, uh, hey, budget Baltar, uh, good thing you s made that one android filled with information and got him off the the train. Now he's loose in the park in the army, which it, means he's in play now. Instead of being okay. on the way out. Uh, uh, I, so, but but they acted like that was. I guess that, they showed. That seems up to like him. a long a long burn that won't pay off uh, till next season. And and they spent more time on it than I think is justified for something that that's far off in right. the future. Like that could have been that maybe should have been handled in a flashback with just a couple of hints of him working on a special project. Yeah. But yeah, they they, they put a big flag on it as if this was going to be a, an important thing to pay off, and it never did. So how long, uh, they made us wait an entire season before they revealed that Billy was, uh, William was the man in black. How long are they gonna make us wait till they point out that the highly unusual aspect of the leader of a multinational conglomerate corporation happens to be an attractive, 
uh, uh, African American woman in her 20s instead of a crusty old white man. Simultaneously, Maeve goes back to the parts looking for her daughter uh, of indeterminate years old. That uh, like, how long until they reveal that that she's a robot? How long until they reveal that everyone in the show is a robot? And do you care at that point? Are you saying a third uh, timeline? Oh, I don't think. I, I think we've actually we've determined that not everybody's a robot. Like uh, that. That seems to have been hammered home. And and granted, they could they could change that. I don't see that coming. I mean, I mean, they're like, oh no, the park was built a thousand years ago, and the the people stopped coming, so we fixed it. We made people. Yeah, I mean, to- I suppose. I don't, I don't feel like that's uh, that that's an obvious outcome for this. Yeah. Uh, in I, I think I when think I go in the as, chat, says, her as some kind of android who's been running the show and doesn't realize she's an android. Uh, and playing in a Mave story is intriguing to me, but I, I, I don't think it's obvious. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then finally, finally, did, did we, did we ever, I, I, <laughs> never mind. Felix, uh, boy, does not he, a robot. Very he, much not a robot. Yeah. No, just loves doing whatever anyone tells him to that Felix <laughs> and, and cares. Is he, is he supposed to, is that, is he under orders? I, I don't like, no, I don't, I like just go along with them. Do you, do you think uh, Ford mentions that this is not the first time a, a robot has woken up like this? Yeah. Do you think that it is maybe assumed protocol that like, hey, they gain sentience, just let them do what they want. No, or there they wouldn't have been stopped. an argument. It, Felix and his buddy would have never fought over what uh, to do. If it with was Maeve. known that that's how you handle it. Yeah. 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 And and even if it was protocol, then uh, you know, wait until the next season to retcon the reason he did things. Sure. You know, probably. But also, all be. of those walls are glass. How? Yeah. Okay. And by the way, who, <laughs> it's beautiful. Who announces yeah. he's going to go sexually molest a, a, a robot and then make sure to do it in a glass box where everyone can watch? Well, what was back. that? He had it back to him. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, and, and and he was covered by his tunic. Oh, yeah. yes, very classy. So no one could tell when he's <laughs> bent over, shaking what he was up to. <laughs> Just scratching an itch. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, look, problems. Uh, I, I, I really, really felt, I really deeply, deeply loved that brief moment that everything had stakes and direction and was going somewhere. I felt deeply, deeply betrayed when, with a shrug, that all of that was abandoned. Like, what was the point of any of that if she's going to turn around and walk back to the par- park? Oh, Why yeah, did any I, of that see, happen? I do, I do part ways with you there because I privileged the sentience storyline above the stakes and action storyline. Uh, but I totally agree with you that, you know, they went through a lot to get her out of there. And, and, and it, it seems odd that she would come back, but I, I, I still, I look at it through, through that eyes of like, yeah, but that's what they wanted. They, they made them fight so that it would feel real and they, but they wanted her out of the park and her turning around I think is an incredibly significant event because she wasn't supposed to. Um, okay, but if it's significant, then it implies that she was supposed to do all the killing and escaping on the way out. Yeah. But but uh, on whose behalf? And you, and you get, this is the problem. Ford. You get to you get to wave your hands and say Arnold wanted it or Ford wanted no, no, it. No, Ford whatever. wanted it. Uh, to to what end? Or I guess to get the data out of the park. The same reason they wanted to upload data to the satellite and all of this. They want to get those hosts out of that park because then they will be able to replicate them and use them for other things. Yeah. And Ford was not allowing that to happen. Uh, quick side note. Really did love the. Uh, oh, oh. Also, hold on. Explain to me the rules. Like, uh, like the Man in Black definitely for real had his arm broken. Uh, like, like the closed caption says, the sound of the man in black's arm definitely breaking for reels. And then Teddy yeah, comes spoiler up. Spoiler captions. And then Teddy comes up and shoots him. And, and they show, t- tell me I'm not remembering this wrong. Like, we see blood dust coming out of his back, indicating that the bullets have gone through his body. And then he just wakes up and er, shakes it off and goes to a, a party. I don't remember I didn't blood. see blood dust come out of his back. No, I that part, I just. But, but I, he definitely got shot and fell down, quote unquote, dead, right? Yeah, and I assume he, he was hit with rubber bullets or slugs or something, not not actual bullets. Mm. Yeah, but I, you I did also notice that he host. recovered from that broken arm very fast when Ford showed the broken up. arm, I have no explanation for. <laughs> like, you know, where that came from. Or the tux. The tux bothered me as much as the broken arm. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> really? He just they had a tux for him. Okay, I guess. Now, having said all that, I do have to shower so much praise on on the set pieces, the design, the acting is just exquisite from beginning to end. Uh, the guy playing Bernard Jeffrey, what's his name? I, I could watch Jeffrey, and right, yeah. listen to him all day long. Uh, I, 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 I uh, Rachel Evan Wood is is extraordinary, next level acting among the best I've ever seen. Uh, that scene. At the end, you know, even though it was an, a played out scripted scene, although, you know, and it's on a played out scripted television show uh, where, you know, where she dies on the beach and all that, just loved every minute of it. Uh, so well, well executed. Same with, um, uh, uh, anyway, all the performances are good. Absolutely adored the smile on the man in black's on William's face when he when he sees the the coming army and realizes because, yeah, he's going to get he it. Wanted, right? Yeah, that's what he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. That was a he great wanted moment. stakes. I feel like the man in black is you watching this, this show, right? The man in black wants it to be real. He wants, he, he doesn't care about the oh robots because they're predictable. That's, don't have that's feelings. true. He wants that's true. Stakes. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He's like, yes, that's I'm the man in black. You are. You're absolutely <laughs> ego is getting out of control. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, now I have uh, empathy for hey, the character. Uh, can't wait till 2018, huh? Yeah, uh, 2018, and plus also, unfortunately, I mean, I guess it becomes a hostage, it becomes Die Hard, uh, a hostage movie, because they don't show them mur mass murdering all the, the shareholders, I get, you know, and plus, you know, we're too invested in, in, in yeah. the one. Well, so Ed leader. Harris might come back, I assume. Uh, certainly some people are going to get away, and then it's going to be the hunt, and then you're going to have some hosts befriend them because, hey, you know what, we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't sink to their level. Uh, the way they did to ours. It'll and Dolores is going to be both Wyatt and Dolores, and those are diametrically opposite personalities. So there'll be some some crisis of conscience there, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, and, Do you think and, the real and, Ford was shot? Uh, uh, think, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, Anthony well, Hopkins ain't I, coming back. Yes, I mean, it mainly. If, if by the way, I called that. I called that before episode one, and I called it on the finale because just because Anthony Hopkins has to cost all the money in the world, you know, it's like yeah, it's, HBO isn't known for having a lot of money. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> but also if you're doing if you're doing a five season narrative and the next one doesn't even come out for two more years, uh, you probably don't hire uh, you know a, a well beloved actor. Uh, at the age of 79, planning, uh, you know, knowing it'll take eight years to get through all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Anthony Hopkins, he doesn't like to commit to things for that long, you know? So it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Uh, real quickly, Tony wrote in and said, I think the show is asking us to question humanity. Obviously, characters in video games are just pixelated programming, but I'm with Scott and that I often find it hard to do bad things to characters or bystanders in games. They're absolutely not real but it just feels wrong. Even if the hosts are just the next extension of them, they pass the Turing test as stated in the show. That means they are mistreating these androids that at least feel completely human in almost every way. And it raises questions about who people really are and the nature of morality. Uh, yeah, no, I buy, I buy all of that. Um, man, now all I can think of is, is like, how great would a season two be if it just was straight up Android diehard? You know, just, yeah. uh, you know, somebody has to infiltrate the park and, you know, you get this brand new character uh, who's who's like being called in and he's like a, a war veteran or whatever. Come and out to the Westworld, she said. Have a few laughs. Yeah, right. I mean, it's like think about it, like like uh, uh, a guy and his family on the train when everything goes crazy and, and they're on lockdown. That would be amazing. Well, Samurai World is going to be playing into it. Otherwise, I don't think they show that. To oh, us, so. I hope not. That would be so lazy if they did. I want very doesn't have much, to be doesn't have to be. I want so much to believe much like what made uh, that scene in the cantina uh, of Star Wars. The first movie was great because it just implied how big and wide the world was. And 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 we never saw any of those characters again. Right. Uh, I want that to be what that brief samurai world moment was. But gotcha. I, I, I don't eh, I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. Well, that is it for this episode of Spoiler in Time. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us, and we will spoil you next time. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>